So welcome for this lecture 28th. This is a new unit that is control theories for load compensation. Okay. Now this our discussion will be for the load compensation where the load configuration may be of any kind. It may be three phase three wire system, it may be three phase four wire system, it may be containing unbalance in currents, harmonics, so and so on. So the load configuration is very general in nature. So for this general type of load compensation which could be unbalanced, which may contain harmonics, which may have three phase three wire, three phase four wire system, how to compensate this kind of load dynamically. It means that if the load changes, the compensation scheme will also change. In the previous class, we have learned that the concept which we, were, we have developed were applicable for the three phase three wire and three phase four wire partially, but the fundamental load compensation, the frequency is the fundamental. But here, even this restriction is not there. Okay. So, in this lecture, we will talk about these aspects of the load compensation. Now, I have shown the diagram. If you see, this diagram is three phase four wire system. Okay, because we have the three phase and we have the fourth wire, which carries the current from neutral wire, this one. And this neutral wire can be grounded anywhere along the path, okay, in building or through a tower and finally this grounding and this grounding and this grounding becomes close to zero potential, sometimes maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3, up to 2 or 3 voltage allowed. So we will consider right now a general load of three phase four wire system. In the previous class we learned that three phase three wire system can be perfectly compensated with the help of purely reactive network. But that was not possible in case of three phase four wire system. Okay. Why it was not possible? Because the neutral voltage was fixed. And therefore, we did not have enough degree of freedom to play with the reactive network of the compensator. Rather, we led to the concept that there are negative resistances in the compensator such admittances. And negative resistances led to the concept that we could develop the active power devices rather than the purely passive compensators. So that idea led to scientists and researchers that can be realize the negative resistance of the compensator and that developed to the a requirement of the active power filters. So active power filters basically are the power filters which can condition the power in a desired way. So here we will study this aspect. So this is three phase four wire system. Okay. And in this system we want to compensate the load which is given here. This load could be unbalanced it could be having plus harmonics. We have even three phase three wire or three phase four wire configuration. Okay. Now the we will start with the first concept called instantaneous reactive power theory. This I have discussed in the three phase three three phase system discussion when we trying to understand the behavior of three phase system for unbalance and unbalance with harmonic and so on. So at that time we developed the theory for instantaneous reactive power load compensation based on load compensation based on the instantaneous reactive power theory. Okay. And what we did in that we resolve these alpha ABC component into alpha beta zero component. 
So you can see here this is BA, BB, BC and we can transform these quantities into B0, B alpha and B beta. You can recall your notes that we have developed these equations in the previous classes. So I am not going to again describe them. I hope you know it but if you have forgotten or it has slipped from your mind you can look back those your notes. Okay. Similarly we can transform the current quantities Ia, Iba, Ic into I0, I alpha and I beta. And this matrix is called alpha beta 0 matrix. A, B, C 2 alpha beta. So this transform called A you can say A 0 alpha beta matrix. So we have these 0 alpha beta quantities for voltage and currents. And based on that we developed the terms like three phase instantaneous power and the instantaneous reactive power. So instantaneous active power is nothing but BA into IA. Conventionally it is equal to BA into IA plus BB into IB plus BC into IC. Okay. That is also equal to B0 into I0 plus B alpha into I alpha plus B beta into I beta. Or this is called as the inner product of voltage and current vectors either in ABC frame or in alpha beta frame. In any frame this power is constant. We have proved that also. And then based on the definition of instantaneous reactive power we define the term QT as the cross product of alpha and beta components and therefore QT was equal to B alpha cross I beta plus B beta cross I alpha and this results into B alpha into I beta minus B beta into I alpha which again be simplifies to ABC form and finally this expression becomes minus 1 by root 3 here and BBC into IA plus BCA into IB plus BAB into IC. Again you have to recall this we already have proved it. It is just a revisiting of the previous concept because we want to apply it for the load compensation. We want to apply the theory of instantaneous reactive power for the load compensation. Now this is the starting point for us. So this point onwards is the first discussion. So once we know that this how we define the instantaneous active power, this is instantaneous reactive power, we can write these terms like this. This is also called as B Q alpha beta because we have ignored the zero sequence component. So this is concerned to alpha beta only because this involves the alpha beta terms. Okay? And this power has two components actually. The one is B0 into I0. It can be called as P0, zero sequence power. And this is B alpha into I alpha can be called as alpha axis instantaneous power. And this is beta axis instantaneous power. You can call it P alpha. This is called P beta. Okay, P alpha and P beta and together this is called as P alpha beta. So P alpha beta is nothing but actually P alpha plus P beta. Okay, P alpha beta is nothing but P alpha plus P beta and P0 is separate here. This is P0. So three phase power therefore can be given as P0 plus P alpha beta. And this is nothing but Q alpha beta. QT is same as Q alpha beta. So this must be remembered very well because this will be used later on. So this P0 is nothing but B0 into I0. So we can write this power, these powers in terms of the matrix form. 
okay so as you can see from this matrix of 3 by 3 that the elements of this matrix are such that it satisfies the above conditions so p0 is equal to b0 into i0 therefore this is 0 and this is 0 okay so this makes the concept that p0 is equal to b0 into i0 the second row is p alpha beta so p alpha beta as i said is nothing but b alpha into i alpha plus b beta into i beta which is p alpha plus p beta so this is same as b alpha here b alpha into i alpha this is 0 and b beta into i beta this here so this makes the p alpha beta and the third row is q alpha beta is nothing but b alpha into i beta so this is b alpha into i beta b alpha into i beta here and the next one is minus b beta into i alpha so this is minus b beta into into i alpha this one so this form the q alpha beta all right this is very interesting equation and this correlates to our voltage and current to reflect the power here okay and actually that is very insightful equation because this is the basis of the load compensation theory all right now i want to correlate the power in terms of the current components okay i want to correlate the power in terms of the current component and therefore we will multiply the whole thing by its inverse okay so we will multiply by the inverse equation of the of the equation inverse of the matrix if you do so then what we will get we will get the this matrix i suggest you to do yourself don't just uh, trust whatever i have done so when i say i0 i alpha i beta is this then therefore this i0 i alpha i beta in terms of the power is inverse of this matrix okay and inverse of matrix is found to be equal to this one this is one by determinant this is one by determinant of the matrix into cofactors transpose so these are the cofactors and then transpose of this matrix here so cofactors are vl b, b, b alpha square plus b beta square here the first element the second is 0 and 0 this is 0 and 0 and this 2 by this is 2 by 2 is b0 b alpha cofactor this is b0 b beta this is minus b0 b beta this is b0 b alpha if we transpose this matrix we will get this one and this one minus will come here plus will come here and they remain zero all the places and this is one by determinant that is one by b0 into b0 b alpha square plus b beta square this side is p0 p alpha beta and q alpha beta is that fine so this is simply inversion of the matrix and correlating the current and power terms together so this is very in insightful equation okay which correlates the power on the one hand side for a given power here this power p0 p alpha beta q alpha beta and on the 
left hand side we have a current i0 i alpha i beta and these correlates through the matrix that is basically voltage matrix you can say 3 by 3 voltage matrix hmm? 3 by 3 voltage matrix its voltage matrix in the sense that elements are voltage but actually dimension is 1 by voltage that is obviously because this side is current this side is power so power by voltage becomes the current the so dimension is 1 by V but the elements are the voltage elements okay or simply call a matrix need not to call the voltage matrix so this gives the concept the idea that the power can be transformed into their equivalent current terms if we set the power if we know what power R to be set then for a given voltage these power can be translated into the respective the zero sequence the alpha phase and beta phase sequence uh, beta phase current components and this is the fundamental of the load compensation that in case of the load compensation we set the powers for the filter we say for the filter that these are the powers that you need to compensate B give order or rather B give command to the compensator or the active power filter that these are the powers for you to achieve and for these powers these are the currents that you are I am supposed to fed to you or you are supposed to fed to the PCC point of common coupling okay so once I know these currents then I can realize these currents with the help of any converter so these equations are further analyzed in form of the individual expressions for the currents I0, I alpha and I beta so you can see it here so this is I0 okay and I alpha and I beta so you can see here the, over the scale this is I0 so I0 is basically nothing but B, P0 by B0 from the matrix P0 by B0 which is same as again I0 so this is trivial and I alpha is B alpha by VL, B alpha square plus B beta square into P alpha beta this has come from this term okay here so I alpha is this into this then plus this into this okay so I alpha is therefore B alpha Y B alpha square plus B beta square this term into P alpha beta plus minus B beta this term Y B alpha square plus B beta square into Q alpha beta similarly I beta is this term into this one plus this one into this one so this is i beta b beta y b alpha square plus b beta square into p alpha beta plus b alpha y v alpha square plus b beta square into q alpha beta now as you see that there are two terms for example i alpha i alpha has two terms that is this into this into P alpha beta plus this into Q alpha beta now as you can see that this component this one is interacting with the P alpha beta and this component is interacting with the Q alpha beta so therefore they are they are called as I alpha P the name is I alpha P because this is interacting with the P here and plus I alpha Q because this is interacting with Q here okay so I alpha has two components I alpha P plus I alpha Q where this is I alpha P here this is I alpha P and this is I alpha Q 
Similarly, I beta has two components. You can see one that interacts with P alpha beta, the another that interacts with the Q alpha beta. And therefore, they can be also referred as I alpha I beta P plus I beta Q. Okay, I beta P plus I beta Q. So, I beta has two components, I alpha has two components and they are called by some proper names. If you look at here, on the right hand side you can see the names. The I0 is called actually zero sequence instantaneous current which is straightforward. I alpha P is called as alpha axis instantaneous active current. P for active this P for active and alpha for alpha axis. So, alpha axis instantaneous active current the value is V alpha into P B by B alpha square plus B beta square in bracket. And I alpha Q is nothing but alpha axis instantaneous reactive current. So, Q for reactive okay? and its value is minus B beta into Q B Q alpha beta y B alpha square plus B beta square. Similarly, I beta P is the beta axis, beta axis active component. Okay, so beta axis instantaneous active current. The value is B beta into P alpha beta divided by B alpha square plus B beta square. And the B Beta Q is beta axis instantaneous reactive current which is uh, reactive current which is B alpha into Q alpha beta divided by B alpha square plus B beta square. So, they have a very specific names to be known and they also have certain meaning in terms of the active and reactive component. You can say beta axis active and beta axis reactive alpha axis active component and alpha axis reactive component and they correspond to the interaction of the active and reactive components of the power. Okay? Now, once we know this classification, these details of the correlating the power into current components and in current components we have active and reactive components of the current in alpha and beta axis, then we will go further to analyze this theory. Okay? we will see that the instantaneous power, three phase instantaneous power P three phase which was equal to B zero into I zero plus B alpha into I alpha plus B beta into I beta. We also call this like P alpha plus P beta and P zero which together is called P alpha beta if you remember last just, just now. So, this is P alpha beta. Okay, so the whole power is equal to actually p equal to p zero plus p alpha beta, and their components are <laughs> the i alpha. Therefore, can be written as in two components i alpha p plus i alpha q, and similarly i beta as i beta p plus i beta q. This we have discussed. If we multiply with alpha and make them separate becomes B alpha into I alpha P plus B beta into I beta P. I am taking this term here. So, this together and this together and we are combining calling it active component and these two together I alpha and this we are joining here as calling reactive component of each phase axis alpha and beta. So, this becomes P alpha P plus P beta P because this is P beta P. Okay? This is P beta P. This is P alpha P. And the other one becomes Q alpha Q P alpha Q. This is P alpha Q. I have used a wrong name. This is not Q alpha Q because we did not use the word Q here. So, make it P. So, P alpha Q and plus P beta Q. Okay. So, you see that there are four terms including uh, five terms including the B0 and I0 and these 
है आर हैविंग एक्टिव एंड रिएक्टिव कंपोनेंट पर्टिकुलरली अल्फा एंड बीटा एंड बी ज्वाइन डम टुगेदर कॉलिंग इट द रिएक्टिव कंपोनेंट एंड द एक्टिव कंपोनेंट्स दिस इज द एक्टिव कंपोनेंट हेयर एंड दे आर द रिएक्टिव कंपोनेंट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट इज दैट इफ बी सम बी अल्फा क्यू एंड बी बीटा क्यू इट इक्वल टू जीरो ओके वाई इट इज सो वी विल सी इट सो जस्ट रिप्लेस द वैल्यू ऑफ P alpha P and P beta P. Okay, we know this is the P alpha P. This one, the B alpha into I alpha P. And this is P beta P. So we substitute the value of I alpha P and I beta P. You will get same as the expression which we have earlier. That is P alpha P and P P beta P. Okay. So we substitute the value of here. It is B alpha. Here this is nothing but B alpha into I alpha p, and this is B alpha into I alpha p is this. So B alpha into I alpha p nothing. I L B alpha y, B alpha square plus B beta square into P alpha beta. So together becomes B alpha square. So this becomes B alpha square here, and divide by B alpha square plus B beta square into P alpha beta. Then we substitute for P beta P here. This term, it becomes B beta square by B alpha square plus B beta square into P alpha beta. Obviously, if you sum them together, again it reduces to the previous expression because if we join them together, this, this is common, and this becomes B alpha square plus B beta square divided by B alpha square plus B beta square becomes one. So finally, it becomes P alpha P, which is correct. Okay, I have shown it here. So this becomes this one, and this becomes this one, which is the same as the previous expression. So that is in line what we have thought. In fact, we started with that concept. But these will cancel, okay? Because p alpha q and p beta q. So what is p alpha q? Is nothing but b alpha into i alpha q. This is p alpha q. And p beta q is nothing but b beta into i beta q. Substitute the value of i alpha q and i beta q. If you remember i alpha q, this is i alpha q, this one, and this is i beta q. So i alpha q is minus b beta into q alpha beta y. B alpha square plus B beta square. Okay, so we substitute this value here. So this is minus B beta here by B alpha square plus B beta square into Q alpha beta. And the other one is B alpha y B beta square B alpha square plus B beta square into Q. Alpha. So this will go away with this. Finally, this is zero, which is absolutely fine because B Had this expression in the beginning itself. Why we have gone this? Okay, this we have gone to understand that there are reactive components, but there is no uh, reactive components as such in the expression of P. So this happened when we sum them together. Then they were cancelling each other, and finally there was no Q term. You can say Q alpha beta term in the P. Three phase. This is also interesting property of the uh, instantaneous reactive power components. <clears throat> so now that is absolutely fine. You have studied the various component and their details. What about what after that? So after that, one more thing is there. that how to set the objectives for the compensator now we know the relationship between the current components and the power components how to apply this for the compensator in order to compensate the load okay so for that we need to set some objectives so let us say we want to apply this for the compensator so there are compensator powers and there are compensator currents how they are related 
by the same expression just we have explained that there is a pf0 here okay so let us say f f for filter power filter so i have chosen the f0 so p p0 becomes pf0 and p alpha beta becomes pf alpha beta q alpha beta becomes qf so i have the other term f okay f for filter so therefore voltage is same because the current compensator the compensator and the load and the source are connected at the same point the point of common coupling so voltage is the same is a stiff source there is no feeder impedance we have considered hence the voltage of supply is same as the voltage of the load and the voltage of the compensator therefore the voltage matrix will remain same this will not change okay so the voltage is same therefore voltage matrix will remain same and this side we add the term f if so this become filter current i0 becomes if0 i alpha becomes i f alpha beta f alpha and i beta becomes i alpha so now we can correlate these these powers of the active uh, power filter active power filter and the current components that are supposed to be given by this filter okay everything is same just we add this subscript f and f for the power filter so now once we know that these are the relationship between the power filter components and the power filter currents then what should be the power for the filter so if we set the objectives for the power filter then we can find the currents and the current can be compensated okay so obviously the pf0 is nothing but zero sequence filter power and pf alpha beta is alpha beta phase filter power and qf alpha beta is qf alpha beta is the reactive power for the alpha beta phase am i correct and as i said any instantaneous power can be expressed by its average component and by its oscillating component in general they may have both components or they may have only one component for example here if you see i have taken a general expression and that pf0 has a average component bar for average and oscillating component and similarly we have a alpha beta which is average component then we have a oscillating component similarly qf alpha beta has a average component and a oscillating component okay but one thing is sure that no compensator must consume the real power nor it should give the real power it cannot by principle of the compensator it must be manipulating only the reactive components of the system not the active components not the active power therefore the net real power associated with the power filter must be equal to zero this is one requirement okay that is always there in case of the compensator or compensation schemes so therefore the p3 phase average power real component this is real component or average power must be equal to pf0 average component plus pf alpha beta component if i say the total filter three phase power is this power real power this must be equal to zero i hope it is clear this is very fundamental point for the compensator hmm second objective could be that the filter zero sequence power must be supplying the zero sequence load power obviously the zero sequence power is the power that is undesired power that power comes from the unbalanced three phase system or because of the presence of harmonics and i do not want that the utilities do not want that the utility is say it is your problem so you solve it why should i supply zero sequence power okay so therefore the zero sequence power of the load must be compensated by the compensator and hence the pf0 
equal to PL0 here, which is sum of PL0 bar plus PL tilde. That is the average component of this zero sequence power and its oscillating component. This component involves the vortice, you know, because the average component has a vortice actually. And that should not be there as such. Because what is will manipulate or change the behavior of the active power flow and it should be equal to zero actually. Compositor cannot supply real power without any active support. Okay. But anyway, we set the objective that all negative zero sequence power of the load must be supplied from the compensator. Okay. Then another compensation objective is that the alpha beta component of active power, P F alpha beta, P F alpha beta must be equal to the oscillating component of load alpha beta minus P L zero bar. Why minus P L zero bar? I will tell you. And why it is equal to P L alpha beta? Because P L alpha beta, as I said, P L alpha beta has two components. That is P L alpha beta bar plus P L alpha beta tilde. So this is actually the real power. This is the ab load average power. Mostly, okay. Actually, if you add P L alpha beta plus P L zero, this is total average load power P L. But let us say for the time being, zero sequence is not there. Then the P L alpha beta bar becomes the actual average load power. So this has to come from source. Obviously, this cannot be supplied by compensator. It has to come from source P S. So P S has to be equal to P L bar. Okay, P S has to be equal to P L bar. And the rest of P L oscillating must be coming from the compensator. That's why the P F alpha beta equal to P L alpha beta tilde, the oscillating component only, and minus P L zero bar. This term. This is very important. Why minus? Minus means basically. It is receiving this average power from somewhere. From somewhere means from source. The source is giving this power to the compensator alpha beta axis so that this P L zero can be compensated. This P L zero can be compensated. This one. Sorry, not this one, but this one. Okay. So that's why this accounts for this. If you sum these together, then the total active instantaneous power of the filter equal to zero. Average power is zero. I hope you are getting me. For example, if you see it here in this particular case, if I set this value P F zero, just check me here, equal to P L zero bar plus P L zero tilde, and I am saying P F alpha beta equal to P L alpha beta tilde minus P L zero bar. If I sum it, then this will be zero, and finally we will have total P F power filter power is. P F zero plus P F alpha beta will be equal to P L zero tilde plus P L alpha beta tilde. You see, this component is gone. This component is gone. That actually means that there is no net vortice power involved with the compensator action. At the end of the operation, there is no such average term in the 
compensator real power because you see the only tilde term is there okay not the average term this is tilde term this is tilde term because this is gone but you may say that we are taking from alpha beta minus means alpha beta taking and plus means i am con consuming it so once i am taking zero sequence real power from the zero phase of the filter and i am giving back to the alpha beta then in that case we should simply don't take it at all but i am saying we can also choose like this that we have pf0 equal to simply pl0 tilde and pf alpha beta equal to pl alpha beta tilde that is also good enough because there is no real voltage but why you want to add this and then minus this because we don't want load to experience something different what it is getting from the three phase supply we still want this load to experience the same supply of power that it was getting before compensation so compensation before compensation the pl0 was supplied by this phase you can see it here by this phase so we don't want to disturb that okay so we will say it is still getting pl0 but from the compensator not from the supply so to retain the behavior of the load we do this that we use it here plus then minus this is being explained and and the last equation for this was the total uh, compensator reactive power that is q f alpha beta must be equal to total reactive power of the load that is very obvious straightforward the reactive power of the load should be completely compensated by the compensator hence this is that were equal which means again in two forms the q alpha beta var plus q alpha beta tilde and which means the b alpha into i l beta minus b beta into i alpha that we can solve again and this is the power flow of this discussion that you can see uh, from here okay i will just put it here you can see this is the three phase load here the which is absolutely can be a balance unbalanced could be a non linear and it could be a uh, three phase three wire three phase four wire what we configuration but right now we have considered here three phase four wire but this is also applicable for three phase three wire this is the source this side put the source green and this is the compensator this side power tonic based compensator active power filter supported by dc link here to so bdc is there so this side is ac and this side is dc okay this is ac side here this is dc side okay now what we have discussed was this that ps alpha beta ps alpha beta is the actually source alpha beta power since we want three phase current balance and sinusoidal and in phase with the voltage zero sequence current will not be there therefore ps0 is zero see here ps0 the zero sequence power zero sequence source power equal to zero and that implies that is zero is zero so there is no zero sequence current in from the source side that is the sign of that the source current is balanced after compensation so who supplies il0 the compensator supplies il0 you can see it here this is if0 this is il0 this is if0 this is il0 here so they are same so this fellow supplies the uh, zero sequence load current by this fourth wire this wire okay so this and this are being supplied this from this 
then there comes the other alpha beta components as i said q f alpha beta is same as q l beta so this loop if you see a uh, gray color loop okay this loop this one and this one going here coming there and going all of this this whole loop is basically q l alpha beta it's it says that this q f alpha beta is equal to q l alpha beta it means the reactive power the all reactive power of the load demanded by the load is being supplied by the filter and it is circulating between the filter and the load there is no reactive component which comes from the source all the reactive power is between the compensator and the nonlinear so this you see this kind of a loop shows that the power reactive power is taken care of by the filter this whole loop and then comes the pf alpha beta these equations so you can see it here that ps alpha beta equal to pl alpha beta plus delta p bar this one more term i have used delta p bar what happens in the actual inverter system there are some losses so losses also have to be supplied from the source okay so the source supplies source supplies the real power of the load this one and plus delta p bar which involves the losses and plus zero sequence component because this can be written as p l alpha beta bar plus p l 0 average power plus p loss what is p loss they are losses in the compensator or inverter switching losses conducting conduction losses resistance losses still losses so and so on so it always has some losses maybe 2% to 3% these losses have to be supplied from the source again otherwise this capacitor will not be maintained to constant dc link voltage so these losses plus the zero sequence component of zero sequence power uh, the real component of zero sequence power together becomes delta p bar bar means average component joined with p l alpha beta becomes the p s alpha beta okay so therefore this delta p is coming here i will explain with this this is delta p coming here here and it has two parts delta p equal to pl 0 bar plus p loss so pl 0 come inside through alpha beta axis and it is supplied to the load through the zero sequence axis okay you study it uh, couple of times so that you have proper feel what is happening in this system so as i said that pf0 is therefore pl0 plus pl tilde and pf alpha beta is pl alpha beta tilde minus pl0 minus p loss so this together we can connect these two terms together here this is minus pl0 bar plus p loss and this we have denoted by delta p okay so that basically means that p f alpha beta is equal to p l alpha beta minus delta p bar minus sign indicates that filter is taking power from the source minus means taking plus means giving back so it is taking minus delta p from the source in order to maintain first thing the dc link voltage and second thing to to take the zero real zero axis pa power p pl0 till a uh, bar so this power has to be also taken and plus the p loss so what did you learn today the first thing we learn that we have resolved the avc into alpha beta as per the alpha beta zero transformation and then using akagi's theory of instantaneous reactive power we set the objectives for the compensator in terms of the power and don't power components have been reflected in terms of the currents in order to compensate also we understood the various power flow in the three phase four wire compensated system 
so in the next class we will further translate these into the real avc frame current components and see that how these currents can be realized using the three phase four wire compensator